Today on Gadget Class, we're doing a video review of an ACT Intelligent Battery Tester. These are actually really handy and really awesome if you do anything with any kind of 12 volt battery. Anything from the like these sealed lead acid batteries that you find in uh, UPSs or alarm systems or uh, backup lighting, um, solar lighting, car batteries, pretty much any type of 12 volt battery, sealed lead acid, car batteries, wet cells, even AGM. Uh, this tester here will actually tell you the amp hours of the battery. It does some sort of internal resistance test um, with their calibrated leads and it tells you within a pretty good accuracy rating what the life uh, or health of the battery is. Uh, these are 9 amp hour batteries and this one's showing up as 8 amp hours. So it's telling me right away that I've lost an amp hour of power. Um, so these are really awesome. They're kind of pricey. I'll put a link up here in the corner and down in the description below. I am using Amazon Smile Links now. They give you the same great Amazon price, but a slice of the pie goes to your favorite charity and the channel. So you're basically taking that same price and spreading it around. Spread that love around. So make sure you use my links. Um, great device. This is their gold version. Gold 0709048. Um, and I've actually had this for a really long time. I actually got it off Craigslist, some guy that worked for an alarm company. Um, he had an extra one, he was getting rid of it. Um, really a great investment if you do any kind of regular work with 12 volt batteries. Um, really worth its weight in gold. Let's take a look at what comes in the box here. This is kind of an old beat up box. Like I said, I've had this for a while. You do get a nice little carrying case, and they give you some brochures and fun stuff, calibration certificate, meaning it that the leads past their uh, calibration range. Important things to remember about sealed lead acid batteries. Give you registration, more registration. They even give you some, uh, oh, a whole bunch of these battery tested stickers. So you can actually mark um, all of your batteries as you're going through. So really a great, great setup they're giving you there. Let's take a look in the case. In the case, what do we got? We've got some uh, clamp adapters. If you've got like a say a motorcycle battery that just have the the clamp studs you could clamp these in there and then they've got a nice good meaty area for your clips to clamp onto I'll show you why that's important here in a second and we got a quick instruction manual so they give you a lot of paperwork with it that's a good thing they apparently take quite a bit of pride in their work and you know it's 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 kind of a Kind of a pricey object, but it does a job. Um, actually, Walmart's using their same technology in their battery testers in their battery department these days. Um, if you go into Walmart with the battery return or warranty concern on a battery, um, they actually have this technology in their little like clamp testers. And I'll actually show this in use on a car battery here at the end of the video as well. So let's take a look at the, the basic components. The leads are calibrated and they are fancy. Um, you can tell I've been using mine for a while. Um, you can see some, uh, some use to them. But you've got uh, some nice little ridges there. They put a whole range of connection options. Um, these ones for clipping onto these things. And then these are the ones you want to use. See all those little spikes? They got a bunch of spikes preg impregnated into like a brass core there. That, that means when you're clamping on to like a lead acid battery with lead terminals, you clamp on those there, that, those little spikes are going to dig into that lead and make sure you get a nice good contact. 
because uh, most of the time with like car batteries, you got those lead posts, they get all covered in oil and corrosion and battery acid and all kinds of fun stuff. So if you just clamp onto the outside without any kind of like meat to get in there or kind of wiggling it around, um, you're not getting a good contact. And since this thing relies heavily on getting a good contact and the overall resistance of the battery to make a determination on the amp hour ratings, um, it's important that you get the best possible connection. Um, they've got pretty much any type of connection you want, but you want to go for those little little spike mounts because they really dig in there. So even on these, you know, in, in the box, in the box they show it just uh, connected onto the lead like that. Um, they're not using the little spike parts, but uh, I like to get those spikes on there whenever I can. That means I'm getting a good connection. Put it on there and kind of wiggle it and those spikes are digging in and you know you're getting a solid, solid connection. So as soon as you hook it up, it'll start out, it'll tell you the temperature in degrees Celsius, the temperature in Fahrenheit, uh, the total voltage, and then the amp hours. It will actually not read if the voltage is below 11 volts. Um, and if the temperature is out of an ideal range, it will not read as, as well. It'll actually say voltage too low, it'll, or it'll say temperature out of range. But uh, I've found it to be pretty accurate. All right, what have, what have I got here? I've got three batteries. This is a battery pack from my uh, electric bicycle that I modified to be a 36-volt bicycle. And three batteries. I left the bike with my mom for a while, and she left it charging way too long. Basically destroyed the batteries. So you take the battery, park, battery pack apart, and you want to see where it's at. Um, simple matter of hooking up your intelligent battery tester to each of the batteries. And it'll tell you right off the bat. Usually you have one battery that's taking all the abuse. It's usually the first on the charge chain. That one's showing about the same as this one, so that's a good sign. But I, I know already because I've been playing around with these batteries. It's the middle one here. There it is, 2.6 amp hours. This one actually started out at like half of an amp hour. And I've been charging it with my, my little homebrew capacitive battery charger here. Um, I'll, I'll put up another video on how to make and use a capacitive battery charger. Um, there's all kinds of people on YouTube trying to get you to pour Epsom salts in your battery and like do all this crazy shit with your battery. Epsom salt, all it does is change the internal chemistry of the battery. It might spike the voltage back up to where it needs to be, but it's changing the chemistry. So you might you might get your voltage back up, but you're ruining the internal chemistry of the battery. And you're not going to get the same amp hours. Don't really believe the Epsom salt myth. With these, I actually opened them up, and I just squirted like a little smidge of water down in each one. They can dry up over time, especially these ones that don't have a lot of excess water. So if you just pull these caps off, take a syringe with distilled water, no Epsom salt, just squirt a little little bit down in each one. Not a lot, just a little bit, just enough to wet the cells down. Um, you can actually uh, kind of save some of the life on your battery with a little smidge of dil distilled water. So. I've, I've tested quite a few batteries with it, and with, especially with these little ones, it seems to be always right on. So for that very reason, I would recommend this product. It is a good product to have if you're working in solar, working with any kind of 12-volt battery. I would recommend it. So let's go out and test a car battery. Here we are outside, and I got the positive hooked up already. And let's hook up the negative. And with this, you want to make sure you get those spikes all up in that lead. It's just barely big enough for a car battery. And my battery voltage is kind of low. 73.25 amp hours. So that's within spec. I believe, uh, I don't know, we'll check on the other one and see if it has an amp hour rating on it. I'm going to pause it and set up on the other battery. Alright, I'm here on my other side. My truck has two batteries, it's diesel, and uh, batteries don't actually say 
the amp hours because car batteries are rated in cold cranking amps. Um, I was hoping it would have the actual amp hours too, but I know most car batteries are between like 40 and like probably 80 or 90. And uh, the one, the other one, let's test this one. Get that spikes in there. 65, so we're actually less on this one. This one is the weaker battery. Let's give it another test. Reconnect these. Sixty-five. Let's reconnect this one. Sixty-five. So this one is weaker than the other one. But uh, it is a good product and it does a good job. It does exactly what it's supposed to do and it does it well. I would recommend it. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and give the thumbs up to the video.